Portfolio calculations, such as those used for the efficient frontier, rely on knowing and being able to adjust the weightings of each asset, and this requires accurate monetary amounts for each position. So what do you do if your trading account uses lots for position sizing and not monetary values? All will be revealed. Stay tuned. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. If you're a talented trader looking to attract investor capital to your strategies, DarwinX is the fastest way for you to do this. We enable traders to raise third party investor capital and then charge success fees on high watermark profits. Additionally, DarwinX itself invests in its traders with our seed capital allocation program that allocates up to 90 million euros per year in successful trading strategies. So if all of that sounds interesting, learn more by clicking on the link here or you can find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. This is the fourth and final consideration for adapting modern portfolio theory techniques to a shorter term trading context. Let's take a look at how lot sizes can be accurately converted to monetary values to perform those portfolio calculations. So if you're just joining us for the first time with this episode, bear in mind that this is one of 35 episodes that have been covering the subject of adapting modern portfolio theory techniques to a day trading or swing trading context. So you might want to review previous episodes to get the full value from this. But the essence of what we're trying to do is encapsulated in this slide. And really the biggest question here has been, can the enormous value of modern portfolio theory be adapted to a much shorter trading time frame? My opinion is that yes, it can, providing there are a number of adaptations. And in the previous three episodes, I've covered three of the key adaptations required. And now I move on to this fourth one to do with monetary weightings and lot sizes. So what's the challenge that we're trying to overcome here? Well, when we think of the standard deviation of returns metric and the expected return calculation that are required for portfolio optimization, you'll remember from those Excel examples I provided previously, we needed the weightings of each of the positions or each of the assets in the portfolio. Now, in order for this to be accurate, those weightings should be based on the monetary investment amount of each position. However, if you trade using an account that uses lot sizes for positions, as opposed to monetary values, then clearly there's work to be done in order to convert that. So a quick example here, of why lot sizes can't be used for weightings. Let's say you're holding a very simple portfolio with just two positions, a position in Australian dollar USD and a position in pound yen. And both of those have a size of 1.0 lots. Does this produce an equal weighting for each asset? The answer is no, it doesn't. And the reason for that is because one lot of Australian dollar USD might have a monetary value of, let's say, 100,000 Australian dollars, whereas a one lot position in pound yen will have a 100,000 British pound monetary value. Clearly, these are not equally weighted. So instead of this being a 50-50 weighting, it might be something more like 3070 or 3565. And this difference becomes even more pronounced when we start incorporating other types of asset class, such as stock indices and commodities. Now, in a previous episode in this series, I went through in a lot of detail what the process is for the calculation to convert lot sizes to a monetary value. And it's this here. 
Now, I'm not going to go through this in as much detail now because you can just skip back to episode number eight in the series and watch that for yourself. But there's just a couple of aspects that I want to focus in on because it's going to be important for the rest of this episode. And it was useful to look at how to perform these calculations in code. And the example that I used was MetaTrader 5 and the MQL5 programming language. And in that language, there are two symbol properties that we can take advantage of. One is called symbol trade tick size, and the other is symbol trade tick value. Now, tick value is the one that I want to really focus on here because this provides what the monetary value of one lot is moving by this particular tick size. And so from this, we can very easily calculate what the price change is for a one lot position moving by a unitary amount. And the actual code for that in MQL5 is shown here. And then we can simply go on then and perform the other two steps of the process in order to calculate what the monetary value of the position is. And I've gone through that really quickly. So if you want more information, then make sure you watch episode eight. But despite that, there was still a gotcha here. And that is, you need to know what currency the tick value is in. And generally speaking, for the vast majority of brokers, for currency pairs, this will be in your own account currency. So if you have an account in euros, this will be in euros. If it's in US dollars, it will be in US dollars. So that's fairly simple for Forex. But when it comes to other CFDs, such as stocks, stock indices, or commodity CFDs, these may well and probably will be in alternative currencies to your own account currency. And what makes this slightly more complex is the fact that different brokers will use different account currencies also. So let me give you an example for my own Darwin X account, which is in British pounds. And here, if I were to trade the Nikkei, the J225 index, the symbol trade tick value property will be in Japanese yen. If I trade the S&P 500, the value will be in US dollars. But if I trade the DAX, you might have expected this to be in euros, but that is not the case. For a British pound account like mine, then the DAX tick value is in British pounds. And so you need to do your research to find out how your broker has defined these calculation currencies in their platform. And although I said that this was a gotcha back in episode eight, what I didn't do was show you how you can resolve that. And so that's what I'm going to do now. So when we think about converting currencies, we need to make sure that all of the assets in our portfolio are converted to the same currency so that those weightings that we need in the portfolio management calculations can be performed accurately and correctly. And the approach that I take personally is that I convert them all to my account currency. That's just what makes sense to me. And so in the previous example, if I am trading the S&P 500 CFD, then I need to convert that USD based tick value to British pounds. Likewise, if I trade the Nikkei, then I convert the Japanese yen based tick value to pounds. So let's look at an example of how to do this. So first of all, I'll look at converting a USD based asset to pounds. And so to do this, we need to use the value of pound USD to perform that for us. And we simply take the tick value in US dollars and divide in this case by pound USD to get the tick value in British pounds. When your account currency is the base currency in the pair, this is when you need to divide by this value. However, let's look at an example now of a euro based asset and converting that to pounds. Here, the British pound, the account currency for me, 
is not the base currency. Here, it's the quote currency. And when this is the case, you need to make sure that you multiply the tick value by this converter instead of dividing by it. And it's that that will give you the tick value in your account currency. And so now with that, we've covered this fourth adaptation that is required. And therefore, that brings us to the end of this series on institutional grade risk management techniques. Now, over previous weeks in this series, I've put together 35 episodes. And if this is the first video that you've watched in the series, I really would recommend that you go right to the beginning of the series and watch this all through. And I think you'd find there was huge benefit in doing so. Now you can get a link to that full playlist from the description right below this video. But exciting news, a new series is coming. And in this new series, I'm going to be taking you step by step through the process I use to evaluate technical indicators. And what's more, I'm going to be using indicators that I have very little experience of, indicators that I've never used up until this point in my trading strategies. And so I'll be finding out what value they potentially pose at the same time that you are. Now, if that new series is already available, you'll find a link to episode one top right now. If not, please do remember to subscribe to the channel and you'll get notified when it's released. But now all that remains for me to say is thank you for sticking with this through the whole 35 episodes. I really hope you've got value. If you have, please do give me a like for this video and the previous ones. But now until I see you for that new series, trade safe.